uh, طيب, so what I'm going to say is as follows that Tazkiyah uh, in Arabic the word zakka has two things right the word zakka has two things or yuzaki but it comes from zakka and then yeah uh, is to purify meaning to remove an impurity so that's one of the meanings and the other meanings is to beautify now you could say that when you have water and it has some sand in there that when you remove the water by purifying the water the water becomes beautiful and this is true or you could say that you have a, a room and you know the walls are white so what you do is you put something nice on the wall and you make it beautiful so by removing something that is ugly you make it beautiful but also when something is normal you can make it more beautiful and then when it's more beautiful you can make it even more beautiful so there's an element to the scale that's subtractive i.e. you're taking away in order to make it better and there's an element that's additive in other words you're, you're adding something onto it to make it better so these are two things about this game okay so uh, uh, alhamdulillah to, 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 to a certain extent that no one here uh, said spiritual advancement right because that's part of the scale but it's not this game okay that's part of the scale but it's not the scale the scale is your ability to better yourself at everything um, Sayyid Qutb wrote a book about uh, Tarbiyah in Islam, right? And it's very relevant to, to what we're, uh, we're discussing here. And he said that basically we're made of, a lot of people say this, we're made of three uh, factors, right? Or made of three segments. If you, so if you have a, a Venn diagram, right? There's you and within you there are three things. Except it doesn't quite work like this because you can't really separate these things. So, um, uh, just let me know when I can use it. Uh, you got your, your mind, your body, and your uh, soul. All right? You can't separate these things because where they come together, that's you know when when does your heart, when you know when does your soul begin? When does your mind begin? Where, you know where where is it you can draw and say okay, so you don't right? So they're always one, but just conceptually we can think about them as three different things. And it's important to say that because sometimes people get really philosophical and they. That, you know, I'm just going to focus on my mind. You can't really do that. Um, and he said, your body is the most limited thing. Your body is the most limited thing. You're limited by space. Right? Your body is where it is. It can't be, you know, yeah, yeah, here and there. Right? At the same time, like that guy in Heroes that can recreate himself 100. Yeah? Can't do that. You're, you're, you're only in one place at one time. Okay, so you're only in one place at one time. It's also limited by time. So once your body, your body dies, right? And before uh, you're, you're, you're here, you're not here, right? So your body is limited by time. So it's limited by space, it's limited by time, it's limited by uh, so many things. Your body is the most limited part of you. And then uh, Sayyid Qut says how we have the mind. Now your mind is less limited than your body, right? Your mind is not limited by place. You could be stuck in a cellar, you could be, uh, 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 you know, unjustly persecuted, but you're not there. Your, your mind is somewhere else, right? And this, that's one of the ways of uh, lasting longer when you, when, when you get tortured. If that ever happens to you, just remember. That's what I said. Um, that, you, you know, so you can be somewhere, but you're somewhere else, right? You're, you're, you're here, but you're somewhere else at the same time. And that's your mind. Your mind isn't limited by time, except when you die, right? Um, so your mind isn't really that limited, right? It's, it, it is limited, but far less than your body. And then we go to the soul, right? Now the soul, uh, Sayyid Khud uh, mentioned how it's potentially unlimited, right? Potentially. Now by unlimited, we don't mean that you become unlimited the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful. But unlimited meaning it's not bound by the things that the, that the body is bound by. So the soul can travel, right? And when you sleep, the soul travels. And souls can meet other souls, right? So the soul can travel. Uh, it's not really bound by time. When you die, your soul still exists, right? Your soul still exists, except for when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blows the trumpet and everything that. But your soul, can you see how far less uh, limited it is? The other thing is that sometimes you can't understand something with your mind. Sometimes there are things that you cannot understand with your mind, right? There are things that you cannot understand with your mind. So the first time a train was uh, was designed and they were telling people how 
you know, they're going, there's going to be the first people that are going to get on this train. There were actually medical articles written about how you should never sit on a train facing where it's going. Why? Because the air will enter into your lungs so quick that your lungs will grow and expand and you blow up. Right? This was the mind thinking and it couldn't comprehend it. Before people fl flew, before we had airplanes and stuff, it was uncomprehensible for the mind that a that, that, that human being could, could do that, could fly. So the mind is limited. I'm saying this up front because when we start doing some of the practical tasks that we, inshallah, will get to, your mind will lie to you. And it will say, but if I let go of this, so when we talk about fear, the best thing to do about fear is to let it go. But most people try to understand it. Right? Most people try to understand it. And you're even thinking, well, if I don't understand it, how can I let it go? Right? Okay, but most people try to understand fear. But, but that's not how it works, and that's not, that's not how you get rid of it at all. Um, and your mind will lie to you. So when, you, when we say, for example, let go of the fear of being poor, let go of the fear of poverty, your mind will go, but I need that to remind me, right, to work hard. So what you're doing is you're holding on to fear in order to, so you're holding on to insecurity in order to be secure. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense, but you're nodding. Right? Because you know it makes sense in your experience. But it doesn't make sense really, logically, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, someone hates me, so I have to hate them back. Right? And your mind will say, if I don't hate them back, then they'll just take the mic. Yeah? So I'm going to be nice to them, slap, I'm going to be nice to them, slap, I'm going to be nice to them, slap. I'm not Jesus, right? Okay, or the Christian version of Jesus, right? Uh, you know, I've only got two cheeks as well, this is the third time you slap me, right? So, but the mind says that. Whereas, the Quran says that if you treat someone, وَمَا يَلَقَاهَ إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ what is this that only a person with extremely good fortune is able to do? That he treats his enemies so well that his enemies become wali and hamid. Becomes the most... Uh, wali means um, not just friend, but like uh, attorney. So, uh, so someone that has your interest in mind and is your friend. Right? Hamim means so <coughs> close. Right? So close. But the mind will tell you, no. If I love this person or if I let go of hating them, then... They're going to take the mic because the mind lies to you, right? The mind is limited. This is why I'm making these distinctions. Is there any questions up to now? Yeah? So the mind is limited. Uh, the same thing with control. Sometimes you try to understand something that is under, ununderstandable, right? You can't understand it. So I'm going through security, approval, and control. I'll tell you why I'm doing that. I don't know why. Um, so control, wanting to understand something is lacking control. Wanting to understand it is lacking control because you either understand it or you don't. If you don't understand it, then the best thing to do is just to forget about it and carry on anyway. Right? Uh, and we'll see uh, experiences through that. I'm very aware that as I say some of these things, sometimes you might be like, but, right, and you want it. So if you have any objections or anything like that, just, you know, let me know. It's not a problem. I'm not supposed to be, this is supposed to be practical to skin. It's not me dictating anything upon you. So does anyone have any objections or anything that's difficult or? I don't quite see how that fits. The last thing said, wanting to understand yourself is lack of control. We all good up to now? Ish. So, um, the, the, he, he, here's how. Uh, this is kind of a model that enables you to understand uh, yourself a bit more. Before we go into that model, um, so we say Tazkiya is the elimination of that which is impure and is the, addi the additive of that which is better and better and better and better. Uh, can everyone here think, can everyone here think of something that they wish, something bad about themselves that they wish was different? Well, that tell me what it is because we're supposed to conceal our faults. Can everyone think of something that's bad about themselves, a, a habit or, or, you know, a trait or anything like that? Has everyone got one? Okay. Has everyone got one? Okay, now, um, will that tell me what that habit or trait is? Uh, what, what thoughts, when, when you think about getting rid of that habit or trait, what kind of thoughts do you have? So tell me the thoughts, as in, I can't, I've had it for so long, I can't get rid of it. Thoughts about it, not it, thoughts about it. So thoughts that would not lead anyone to know what it is that your, your trait or habit is. Anyone, just anything. Yes. 
there are barriers, physical barriers that are in the way. In order for me to overcome them, I need to um, overcome those barriers. It's a bit slow, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Physical barriers. Okay, um, what else? I'll change later. Better. I'll change later, right? What else? Family. Family. My family won't like this, or I'll get a backlash, or what else? Lack of practice. Lack of practice. Okay, what else? Too hard. Fear. 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 Too young? Too hard. Too hard? Yeah. Okay. So these are all thoughts, okay? And what kind of emotions do you have about it? Frustration. Frustration. Guilt. Guilt. What else? What else? Don't want to change. Don't want to change. Weakness. Huh? Weakness. Weakness. You feel weak? Okay. What other feelings? Insecurity. Insecurity. So, notice that you have your problem, right? And then you have your thoughts. You have to put the other pin down. Oh, this is your time, right? <laughs> okay, and then you have your feelings. Okay, uh, right? And you have uh, your desires as well. Now, can you see how, imagine this was something that, you know, that existed. These things hold it into place. So you have the problem, and that's bad enough. But then, these things hold it into place as well. So these things kind of, you know, it's like uh, uh, they wedge it into place. So you've got the issue, and then your thoughts wedge them into, so I can't change, or it's too difficult, or my family. And then your emotions. So now, you know, okay, so I can't come here, but then I've got a feeling I can't go there either. But what about one move that way? Then there's desires, right? So, and you have more than one feeling. So there's one here, one here. So what happens is it encases the issue so that you can't move, you can't get out. Does that make sense? So, Tesqueya, part of Tesqueya is getting rid of these thoughts, getting rid of these feelings, getting rid. Click there to restore right. No, no, I got rid of it, yeah? <laughs> so getting rid of your feelings, your thoughts, and your design. Right? See how what happens with magic? See how powerful Tesqueya is? Um, so, but, you see, so sometimes you're like, I want to understand, I want to understand my problem, I want to understand my problem, I want to understand my problem. All of these thoughts that you're acquiring about your problem actually hold your problem into place. Right? That's very counterintuitive. And your mind will be going like, no! Right? Because, you know, your, because it needs to exist. Your mind wants to exist and it feels like it's dying when you say to it, shut up. Right? In fact, who here is willing to do something that they don't understand? Okay, and I know why. Right? Anyone else? Okay, see how, see how, you know, you're like, yeah, right? And there's not many people even doing that, right? Why? Because, the, you know, you think you are your mind when you're not your mind. You're not your mind. That's the first thing they have to understand. You're not your mind. And you're not your emotions. And you're not your thoughts. Okay? Why is it called your mind? When I say this is my keys, these are my keys. Grammatically correct. This is my book. Right? What does that mean? Who's the master and who's the slave? You're the master. I'm the master of the book. The book is my slave, mine. I own it. But when we say oh, my mind, semantically we're saying my mind, I'm the master and it is a slave. But you get a thought and you go and act upon it. So who's the master and who's the slave? The mind is your master and you are the slave. And this can happen with your emotions, it can happen with your desires as well. So you're bigger, you are stronger than your mind. You're more than your mind. So sometimes the mind, sometimes, is programmed, is blah, 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 gives you an idea. It's just an idea, man. Right? It's not, you don't go how high. It's just an idea. Just let it come and let it go. It's just an idea. You don't have to act on it. Same thing with desires, same thing with your emotions. They're just ideas. Come and they go. Right? You have it yesterday. Maybe. And if you've had an idea for 200 years, that doesn't make it true. It just means you're good at repeating the idea. I'm an idiot, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I never succeed. That doesn't make it true. It just means that the audio, the play, needs to press, you need to just pause it. Yeah. So then what do you do? So you have a thought coming to your mind, what do you do first? Whatever comes to your mind first, or how? We're getting there. Oh. But that's a very, 
I, I want you to have the attitude that this brother has. What do we do? Try to attitude. Yeah? This is all we try to this game. So we have um, this is useless. We have uh, 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 thoughts, right? And supposedly we've got thirty thousand, twenty-four thousand, whatever thoughts. ECG machine. They put it someone's mind. Whenever there's a frequency, go. He's thinking, right? Um, um, if we had 24,000 thoughts, we'd be very creative. Uh, and when I look around, I don't, I don't see that. Um, so I don't think that's true. So, but let's just say we've got 1,000 thoughts a day. Um, then you have emotions. Again, potentially you could have thousands of emotions, but as a therapist, as someone who's been doing this for 11, 12 years, most of the really colorful people that live really colorful, you know, fruitful lives have about 30 or 40 emotions. And then you have your desires. I'm going to suggest that you have three desires. The desire to control, the desire for approval, and the desire for security. Control, approval, and security. Okay, control, approval, and security. So, these three desires create emotions. And these emotions create thoughts. Right? So I'm coming. I'm, let me answer your question. And then we're going to do a practical exercise. So you got your desires, which is, what are your desires? The desire not to listen. <laughs> okay, what are your desires? Control, control, control security, 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 right? This, these three generate emotions. Give me an emotion. Happiness. Okay, what else? Satisfaction. Okay, emotions. These emotions create thoughts. This is why when you're depressed, you have stupid thoughts. The most stupid thought people have is, I want to commit suicide. And they always have it when they're depressed. Right? And when you're happy, you have better thoughts. Right? When you feel, when you feel motivated, you have good thoughts, high caliber, high quality thoughts. When you feel apathetic or, or bored or stressed or anything, you have low quality. So this is proof that your thoughts come from your feelings. Today, and even in Islamic literature, it's always about we need to change our understanding. Right? We need to change our, but what our understanding is just these are thoughts. So what you're doing is you're changing the most superficial thing. Okay? So, now I've said that the thoughts, emotions, and desires. But what if you were to take this and kind of turn it like that, so they were one thing and you're looking through it as a hologram, right? So you consist of thoughts, you consist of, and these all three things kind of, is like, what is light? Is that a wave or is that a particle, right? So it changes depending upon how you look at it. So sometimes a thing will be a thought, sometimes it will be an emotion depending upon how you look at it. Think of it like that. So this is a hologram that you're looking through now, yeah? So in the front there's thoughts, then there's emotions. So if you want to change yourself, it means you have to change a thousand emotions a day, right? But if you want to shortcut that a little bit, then you change your emotions, because your emotions generate your thoughts. So by changing one out of 30 emotions, you've changed a thirtieth of all your thoughts, because your thoughts are generated by that one emotion. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? And that emotion... All 30 or 40, so in order to truly change yourself, you have to change 30 or 40 of your emotions, right? Every so often. But in order to, if you want to shortcut that, then what generates emotions? Desires. And what, how many desires do we have? Training. Okay. Control, approval, and security. So by changing one of those, it cuts out so many of those emotions and cuts out so many of those thoughts. That's the shortcut, right? This is this key. So, when you think about that thing that you don't want to think about, that you want to change, that you're not happy with, that trait or that habit or whatever, it consists of thoughts, it consists of feelings, it consists of desires. Right? The thought of I can't change, I'm weak, you know, the feeling of I'm weak, the feeling of desperation, the feeling of guilt, etc. All these things hold it into place. So actually the only way to get rid of it is to get rid of those things and then to look at it and then to get rid of it. That's how it's done. So uh, I'm going to go into practical exercise now, inshallah. We'll do it really good for time. So what I want you to do is get into the pairs. You don't need to move too much, that's fine. Um, so pair up, just the person next to you. And uh, we're going to call this uh, secret therapy, right? I don't want you to tell, I don't want you to tell. So I'm not saying if you don't mind, tell them that you were abused as a kid. No, I'm saying <laughs> don't tell anyone anything about your problem, right? Uh, does that make sense, right? This is so it, algebra, right? X or Y or Z or, or B or D, right? Uh, so I have a pro I have a, I have X, 
and it make it a problem. I have X, uh, and here's how I think about it. Here are some thoughts around it. Here are some feelings, and after you've done that, we'll we'll get back together. So this should only take you a minute and a half each. Okay. Once that's finished, three three minutes from now, I'll call you back and keep make a note on your mobile or something like that. Make a note of what you're going to write or what other person thinks. So what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you're confused. So one second, one second, one second, one second. I'm going to make sure. So what are you going to do? Cameraman. Um, so we're going to think for um, a problem that we have. Uh, don't mention it to the person. Just think about it. Tell them about um, what thoughts and emotions you have. You have around the subject. Yeah. You're still confused. Is that clear for everyone? Just make sure you've done the each. Yeah. Uh, small, small. It's gonna be quick, okay? I don't want any philosophical discussions. Just bang, 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 bang.
So you've all, you, uh, everyone's given all their thoughts and emotions about a particular uh, thing. And these things will fall under three categories, all of them. Thoughts or emotions will all fall under three categories. Either it's a lack of control, lack of approval, or lack of security. So you said you didn't, do you mind tell me what is the, you couldn't categorize under control or approval or security? You kind of stepped ahead, step ahead. I just thought I couldn't categorize it under. Can you tell me what it is? Are you willing to share? Probably not. No. Okay. So, yes. I'm willing to share. Memory. I have bad memory. I forget things very quickly. Okay. So I have bad memories. What is that? Is that a desire for control? Is that a desire for approval? Or is it a desire for security? Security. Okay. Why? Because when I forget things, I feel like I don't know what to do in a situation. Okay. Okay. So. There's the issue and what it does and the consequences of that issue and they give you desires. So he feels insecure, have I forgot something, he's what, right? Uh, am I going to forget for the exam, have I advised it, blah, blah, blah. So that makes him feel insecure. But what is the forgetting, what is that? For you. I don't know. I would thought, you know, control, desire or... Mm. What is it? When you forget, is that is that lack of control? When you forget, is that lack of approval? When you forget, is that lack of security? I don't know how to categorize it. Okay, think, and I'll come back to you. Has anyone else got anything? So, uh, feeling of frustrated that someone said they are there, right? What is that? Control. Huh? Control. control. Okay, and what, is, what else is it? Security. Feeling frustrated, you say? Isn't that an emotion? Yeah, what, what, what category does it fall under? Is it approval? Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, each one of us will have a different outlook on this. Okay. But when I think of frustration, I'm frust I'm frustrated means I, am, I disapprove of what's happening. Okay. So that's how I feel about what I'm frustrated about it, right? You know, you, you don't frust you're never frustrated with something you like. You're frustrated with something you disapprove of, you dislike. Right? But also, it's a lack of control. Because, you know, I'm frustrated because I can't, I can't, I, you know, I, I just can't hold it, I can't, I can't change it. It keeps happening. So there's a lack of control in it. Right? Right? Uh, lack of security, uh, it may be the consequences of it. Right? So, you know, is, I'm going to get in trouble because I keep doing this, right? Or, or you know, I'm going to forget about... So, forgetting is a lack of control, right? The actual act of forgetting is a lack of control. Now, the fact that you think you need to forget or that you're forgetful can lead you to lack of approval of yourself. Oh, man, I forgot again, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lack of approval, right? And it leads to lack of security because you, you need the information and it's not there. Okay? So, what you're doing, I'm going to introduce to you a bit of a weird concept now. You're creating that. You are making yourself forget, right? Uh, uh, say, for example, you you lie a lot. So, what is lying? What is lying? Yeah, yeah. Control, <laughs> control, control. <skin. laughs> what is lying? Not definition, what is it in terms of category? Lack of security. Okay. Okay, see how you come up with different things? Yeah. So why why is it lack of security? Because uh, you're not sort of confident about yourself, hence you have to lie to make up a some picture. Yeah, you have to lie to, to feel secure. You know, you know, it's not I don't feel too secure if people find out the truth. You should said lack of approval. Right? Why? Lying, you don't think it's something that should be done. So if you're lying, okay. lying itself, not how you feel about it. That's a valid answer. Let me be more specific. Lying itself, why would it be a lack of approval? You're doing it secretly or something. Yeah. So Possibly, like, you're doing it secretly like, for someone else. Yeah, basically, like, you might maybe exaggerate things. Okay. To make you seem so there's types of lying, right? Oh, there's 10 people, man. I took them all at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like half a guy, and he was a midget. <laughs> okay. So, but, but that's a lacking approval, right? I want to big myself up, you know, so there's a lacking approval. And um, it could also be that you, that you, uh, there's something about you that, that you don't like that you want to lie about. 
Okay. Now, really, the only time where you can lie in Islam is to help two other people. Right? And that's not lacking approval or control or security. The only time you're allowed to lie in Islam is when either, you know, you're being interrogated by, uh, uh, by your enemy. And that's not lacking approval or control or security. Yes? But if someone asks you... Or with a husband or wife. So, yeah, specifically yeah. about a sin, for example, are you allowed to lie and say no? Like, they ask you, did you do this? Or yeah, they're not allowed to ask you that. Okay. You know, you're allowed to slap the person. <laughs> <laughs> they're not allowed to ask you that. Yeah, um, so you don't even don't feel that you even have to lie. Just, just say it's not in your business, right? Um, and like that, don't say it's not in your business and feel shy. None of your business, right? If it's, if it's the same gender, it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, how would it be a lack of control? Yeah, it becomes a habit, so you can't control it. Okay, possibly. Mm -hmm. What else? Have to to control the environment. Yeah, you, you, you have to lie about something because you couldn't make it the way that you're saying it is. So it's a lack of control. Does that make sense? Okay, so give me something else. Can I just ask, like, why is it that like, we got one problem and it's fitting into every single category? Yeah. Sometimes it fits into all three, sometimes just one, sometimes two. So give me something else. Backbiting? Backbiting. Okay, what is that? Uh, who said? Yeah, who said? Approval? It's almost. Like, why is it like security? Um, because, well, you, I feel like you would feel insecure about yourself, so you'd say bad things about other people. Okay. Yeah. So, can you see how letting go of that lack of security would stop you from backbiting? Because there's no need to do it anymore. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so, we've talked about problems. Now, let's talk about good things that you're good at. Okay, let's talk about good things we do. So someone give me something good that they know about someone else or about themselves, but don't tell me who it's about. Just say, just put the left out. I know someone's very honest. You know someone's very honest. It's very honest of you. Um, uh, okay, well, I'll take that on board. And who else give me something else? Patience. Patience. Wise. Wise, okay. So, it's not going to work with these two examples, but let me just <laughs> kind of work with it, and inshallah you, you'll see. So say um, something good about you, I read a juz a day of Qur'an. Okay? I read one juz, right? Just right? Uh, of, of Qur'an. So that's good about you, right? Why isn't it better? Because you could read two juz. Because you could read, yeah, but why don't you read two juz? Mm. Contentment. Huh? Contentment. Okay, so again we fall into the same categories. Control, approval, security. Right? Do you think, khalas, that's enough, I'm happy with myself now? Right? Then that's a lacking of approval. Even though it seems like you're approving of yourself, it's really a lack of approval. Because you, it, it stops you, it limits you from doing two jaws, doing three jaws, four jaws. Does that make sense? So these things not only put your problems into place, but they stop your good things from getting better. And this is where we go. So the first thing we'll be doing is the subtractive element to scale. Now we're moving into the additive, right? So by letting go of those things that you are very proud of, right? Are very proud of, right? We won't have time to do this now, but think about the thing you're most proud of. The thing that's amazing about you, that you, you know and everyone else knows. Or maybe no one else knows and Allah has given you that sincerity where that your insides are better than the outside. Think of the thing you're most proud of, right? And if you can let go of that, and your mind's going to scream, it's going to go, oh, if I let go of that, it would just be a mess, right? Some of, for some of you, it's thinking. The thing you're most proud of is intelligence. But your mind is limited. So if you let go of serving your mind, of your mind being your little mini ilah or deity, right? It being your master, then you're going to get even smarter. Because you've let go of the thing that was limiting you. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, same thing with sports. In order for you to remain in the flow, right? Does everyone know what in the flow means? In the zone. Okay, in the zone. Right, so you, you know, you're playing tennis, for example, and you know, everything goes, all you can see is the ball, right? And as it comes to you, it actually grows and it slows down. You can see the little hairs on the tennis ball coming towards you and then you hit it. That's called in the flow. Right, when you're reading a book and you can't hear anyone else or anything else happening around you, that's called in the flow. It's also called hypnosis trance, but being in the flow, right? So, what stops?
stops athletes from continuously having that is they go, wow, that was an amazing game, man. I hope I can do this again next time. So now they're stuck in the past. Okay, why? Because they've held on. They've desired to repeat the control that they had before. There's one other thing I want to uh, just kind of, in terms of definition or understanding. Um, wanting means lacking. Right? I want some water because I didn't have any. Right? Um, you know, I want a watch because I don't have one. But if I had one, I wouldn't want one. So by definition, anything that you want means you don't have. Does that make sense? So if you are the Rabb, if you are the Lord of your own self, and you are the Lord of what happens around you, okay, then uh, to a certain degree, uh, uh, depending upon many factors, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, uh, you are creating, so by saying I want control, it means I am lacking control. Not just in terms of a descriptive, but in terms of a proactive verb. I am lacking, I am walking, I am lacking control. So when I think that I need to backbite, I am creating lack of approval. I'm not just lacking it. Does that make sense? It may stem from a lack of approval, but I'm also continuing to lack approval of myself by backbiting. I'm continuing to lack approval of myself by lying. Does that make sense? That's usually the bit that's not as easy to grasp as, as other things, yeah? When you want, you are proactively lacking. So when you run after dunya, when you run after a new job, when you want a new job, right, then you're lacking it. So people go, so how do I have? Acquiring and wanting are two different things. Acquiring and wanting are two different things. Acquiring is the process of having. Wanting is the process of lacking. Think about something that you've wanted for ages and you still don't have it. You want to change a bad habit and you still got a bad habit because you're lacking control or you're lacking control. You're lacking Does that make sense? So wanting equals... And so as you let go, so how do you do this? Going back to... I've been answering your question since you asked it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just sort of like the Islamic perspective as well, like how the Prophet people upon him like approached it or All right. like examples from there, please. It's interesting that you think that. So we'll, we'll tackle that as well. Um, when you've got something and you want to let go of it, let go of lacking control, lacking approval, lacking security, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, It's a decision. It's a simple decision. And it doesn't feel like that, right? When, when you think your life is under threat, when you think, you know what, I've got to do this thing or else I have this bad feeling, right, that I just can't get rid of, let me go. This is what usually compulsion is, right? So people that eat and eat and eat and eat and eat, right? Uh, uh, I'm talking about not even obese, but like people that are obsessed with food, right? Why? Because the, you know, if they feel lack of approval for themselves, then they'll eat in order to hide that feeling, suppress it, to escape from it, right? So what you've got to do is you've got to let go of that feeling. And it's that simple. I decide to let go of the feeling. You might get another old feeling, it's like a, a box of tissue papers. You take up the top one, you're thinking that's all you can see, just the top tissue. So you take it off and there's another one. Oh my gosh. I'm not doing it, no you are doing it, but there's another one. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing it, no that you are, but there's another one. Until the end there are no more tissues in the box and you can throw the box away. Right? So you just make the decision. Make the decision. Right? So we've got five minutes. Uh, does anyone have a feeling that they want to get rid of that we can just try out here? Without tell me what it is you. A feeling? Yeah. Or a limitation. <coughs> so can I just go back what if um, you can't identify which one it is of them, and then you can't make that decision. If you can't identify, which... if you can't identify, yeah. then that's a lack of control. <coughs> okay. But so like... then, once you lack, when yeah. you let go of lacking control, yeah. you'll be able to identify, mm. and then you'll know, and then you'll do. Or, oh, say for example, it's just a general lack of um, making a decision. No, you can't make. That's lack of control. Yeah. That's lack of control. Yeah. Whenever you don't understand something, that's lack of control. Whenever you want to figure something out, that's lack of. control. I have a feeling. Okay. Um, uh, regressing something that you've done. Okay, or, going back into it. Yeah, fixating about it. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Can you do, uh, when you think about a thing that you've done, okay. um, I'm going back into it or whatever, or slipping into it, yeah. Uh, uh, the feeling that you get, are you aware of it? Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's either going to be in your chest or in your stomach mostly. Yeah. Okay. So just be aware of where it is. Okay. Yeah. 
No, okay. You, I mean, okay. So it doesn't matter whether you say or not. This is about you, right? I just want to show people how easy this could be. So feel it. Okay. Can you welcome it? Um, I mean, be glad it's there. Or welcome. It. Welcome. As in, just admit that it's there. Yeah. Okay. So welcome it some more. Okay. <laughs> okay notice it gets lighter as you welcome. It. Okay, so welcome it some more. Okay, so what's happening here is that there's a feeling. When you welcome a feeling or you welcome a thought, what you're saying is, you don't own me. Right? Does that make sense? Whereas, see what usually happens is, you know, feeling comes along, right? Now it's there, feeling is there, right? Regardless of what I do, it's there. So I can either go, which is that, you know, right? Or like that, or I can just say, that's it. Now, if I, if I go like that, halas, I acknowledge that it's there. Now, after doing that, I can walk up and say, can you sit down again? <laughs> or, you know, blah, 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 whatever you want. So, welcome the feeling. Okay. Now, notice it doesn't feel as big and it does, monstrous as before. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, so, carry on with that. So, what is that feeling? Is it a lack of approval? Is it a lack of security? Is it a lack of control? You said you're afraid of regressing. Mm, it's a lack of control. Okay, so can you welcome the fact that it's lack of control? Yeah. Okay, now can you make a decision that you're going to stop lacking control? Yes. Okay, and just as you did that, you felt lighter. Yeah. Okay, make it again. Okay, and again. Okay, now if you keep doing this, you will forget about the fact that it happened. See, the past doesn't exist unless you recreate it. Right? The past doesn't exist unless you recreate it. So if you've had a habit before, you have to actually go out of your way to have the thought, the imagery, the, 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 the thing you might, oh, I need to do that, I don't want to do that, and then you go ahead and do it. Right? You, have to, you have to go through that program again and again. Right? So you have to continue. So can you let go of lacking control about the fact that you think you can't, you can't, you have to go through that program, but you don't? Okay. Now, think about the thing that did or happened to you or you did or partook in or someone inflicted on you or whatever. And can you let go of lacking approval for yourself because it happened? Okay, and really let go of lacking through. Okay, and more. Now, how do you feel? So much better. Okay. <laughs> right, so that's how it's done. Now, the question is, is this Islamic or tied back to the Prophet, Isis, etc.? The reason why I started off with the expression of Tazkiyah. Your question is really important, but at the same time, both of these things in parallel at the same time, right? The first thing is important, but at the same time it's absurd. It's like someone saying to me, can you tie back me wearing glasses to the Prophet right? Uh, just because I use an Arabic word doesn't mean that... Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is that Tazkiya, the Prophet says, Indeed, successful is the one that purifies and betters it, and failure to the one that lets it rot, or lets it decay, or doesn't do anything with it. right? So the Prophet ﷺ would go through, but what we also find from the Sirah, when you study the Sirah, is the, the Sahaba did this naturally. So for example, Yusuf ﷺ, uh, when his brothers came to him, and they said, oh, it's, you know, you're Yusuf, yeah, can you forgive us? He said, La tatriba alaykum, he said, this, don't worry about it. You can't say don't worry about it, unless you already forgave them ages ago, unless you already let go of it. That's not something you say to someone. After all of that hell you went through, prison, you know, in a, in a bloody well about to die, right? You don't go through that, all of that, for all those years. And then someone comes up to you, you know, this is what you want to do, right? You don't go, it's okay, don't worry. You don't do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's many examples in the Quran and the Seerah and the Sahaba and the Prophet where this uh, when 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 Jibreel Islam asked the Prophet, Islam, shall I crush the mountains upon them? Right? He said, uh, no. He had already let him go. To understand now the categories of control, approval, security that is like a slant on how to do it. But anything that's going to help you better yourself surely is a slant, yeah. So it doesn't have to be a bit. Um